Most modern fans know Star Wars as this massive entertainment franchise that brings billions of dollars in revenue each year. But things were not always easy in that galaxy far, far away. In fact, the first Star Wars movie almost got scrapped before it got greenlit, which makes its success even more impressive. So let's take a trip down memory lane and see how we got here. First, the original Star Wars pitch was rejected by Universal. We know the original Star Wars trilogy as this coherent, epic sci-fi story spanning over three movies. But the reality is that back in the day, things couldn't have been more chaotic. George Lucas always wanted to create a fairy tale for kids to teach them about right and wrong. But translating that into Star Wars was perhaps not even in his wildest dreams. In the early 70s, the filmmaker had already failed to satisfy corporate movie executives with his pitches. But over a period of five years, he continued to work on his dream of making a sci-fi space opera for the ages that would evoke the Flash Gordon and Buck Rogers serials of the 30s. And even when he had formulated his ideas for Star Wars, he was still rejected by Universal. But only two weeks later, 20th Century Fox swooped in and gave George Lucas $50,000 to write and $100,000 to direct a film. Now, by today's standards, especially for a Star Wars movie, this budget is absolutely tiny. For context, the budget for The Rise of Skywalker was more than $275 million. And even though Episode 3 ended up grossing $250 million, the story wasn't nailed down until the last moment. In fact, the final script for Star Wars A New Hope looked nothing like the first draft, almost like they were two completely different movies. But all's well that ends well, right? Next, CGI wasn't really a thing back then. These days, we know Star Wars is the franchise that has some of the best CGI out there that pushes the boundaries of the medium. Back in the 70s, though, CGI kinda didn't exist. So George Lucas and the team, with the little money that they had, came up with some truly innovative ways to add effects to the movies. Most of the visual effects work was actually just physical creating models, puppets, and sets. And a lot of it was just cobbled together using makeshift items from the set. For instance, the exploding Death Star was just cardboard and bits of titanium, and Yoda was an animatronic puppet. Not only that, but the most iconic weapon in any movie franchise, the lightsaber, was created using parts from a camera flash attachment. Doesn't that sting, though, knowing that you spent $400 on a lightsaber that was originally made with random stuff and some tape on the set? Maybe the fact that it glows and makes a cool whoosh and buzz can make you feel better though, because the ones they had on set didn't. They had to add the lighting effects into the movie afterward, which was done all on tape, since digital films didn't exist back then. And it appears we still haven't figured out the best way to do Star Wars CGI. Fast forward to slightly more modern times with the prequel trilogy, and things were a lot better. Thanks to the massive success of the original trilogy, the budgets were a lot bigger. And by the late 90s, CGI was a mainstay in filmmaking. So we got rid of many practical effects and things like ships and backgrounds were done all with CGI. However, Puppet Yoda was still present, and he looked kind of scary. But Star Wars is an ever-evolving entity, and both the prequels and the original trilogy have gotten multiple visual upgrades over the years. The effects look crispier, Yoda is now fully animated and doesn't look like a horror movie goblin, and obviously, the big-budget set pieces are nothing to scoff at. And these days, most of Star Wars is actually shot on a green screen with heavy CGI and visual effects work done later in the editing booth. And even though we loved CGI Yoda, his little cousin Grogu in the newer shows is also a puppet, which looks super adorable. Of course, our ability to create convincing models and set pieces has also improved, and when you have hundreds of millions of dollars of budget, you'd expect things to look good too. But this doesn't mean that new Star Wars content is perfect, because we still have rare cases of weird-looking CGI, like the de-aging tech that was used for Luke Skywalker in The Mandalorian. Up next, the animated shows really brought lightsaber duels to life. There's a reason why animated shows don't usually tend to translate well to live action. You see, the things that you can do with characters and environments are just infinitely easier in animation than in a movie. For instance, we've seen some incredible lightsaber duels in the animated shows that just are not physically possible for the characters playing them in real life. And being a sci-fi franchise, a lot of things in Star Wars are meant to defy physics as these incredibly nimble warriors fight for their lives. You know who isn't fighting for his life, though? Obi-Wan in A New Hope. Seriously though, there have been some awful and slow lightsaber fights in the original trilogy that just can't match the intensity of the animated shows. And even though the prequels improved a lot in this regard with some sick choreographed duels, it still wasn't quite what you'd expect from someone with superhuman reflexes. But when we got the shows like The Clone Wars and Rebels, we really got to see Star Wars at its full glory. And despite some iffy animation stuff in the earlier seasons of The Clone Wars, things got progressively better with time, and by the end, many people would say that the animated 
stage shows are actually better than live action. And of course, this also extends to the games of the franchise. We've got some horrendously bad licensed games over the years, but now AAA developers have been churning out some brilliant stuff like Jedi Fallen Order and Knights of the Old Republic. Star Wars stories and characters continue to be a complicated matter to this day. Everyone loves the original trilogy and the incredible characters that it introduced us to. And most people would say that despite their flaws, these three movies have aged super well too. But as time has gone on and we've thrown these characters into different times in their lives, things have kind of started to fall apart. Back then, George Lucas had the final say and he clearly had a plan in mind for each movie even if he continued to make last minute changes. Back then, we only got three movies in the 80s and three in the early 2000s. Now, imagine having to wait for decades for a new Star Wars movie. Sounds crazy, right? But many would argue that it was the planning in between all those movies that made the story feel cohesive and well thought out. Since it has become a massive franchise that needs to become a cash cow for Disney though, there's a lot more content coming out of it. More Star Wars should be a good thing though, right? Well, kinda. The thing is that characters like Luke, Leia, and Han all got pretty satisfying endings by the end of Episode 6. But when we got the sequel trilogy, it opened a whole new Pandora's box for these characters who had to return to the franchise. But since there was never a clear vision in mind for the three movies, we saw a lot of different scripts being thrown around. The movies all felt disjointed from one another tonally. However, just the fact that these actors were willing to come back to their roles at all after so many years is super cool. And despite its flaws, the sequel trilogy was still highly enjoyable because of this. With that said, seeing characters evolve over time and enter different eras is cool. But sometimes this can make the massive galaxy far, far away feel tiny. And now, modern Star Wars writing is afraid of taking risks. And this is perhaps the biggest crisis that the Star Wars franchise faces right now. Back in the day, you didn't know what to expect from a new movie in the franchise. And even the original trilogy was vastly different from the prequels. But modern movies and TV shows have taken a really safe approach to everything, sometimes even copying story beats from previous works. And maybe it's done to avoid fan backlash since it's such a beloved franchise, but the lack of creativity in modern Star Wars storytelling has made it a less prestigious proposition. Not only that, but the fact that this is a story about a massive galaxy, but we somehow continue to fall back into the same old characters and locations is something that doesn't need to happen anymore. There's plenty of room to explore new characters and stories. However, with the New Republic Phase 2 on its way, it seems like we might get our wishes fulfilled sooner rather than later. Even with all its shortcomings, Star Wars has always been a magical franchise. And to see it start from nothing, to having TV shows, movies, toys, games, and literally every merchandise item you could think of has been truly spectacular. The world just wouldn't be the same without it, and we're glad that our favorite space opera has made it this far. That's a wrap for this video. See you in the next one.